So you've just finished Warlords of New York. You've defeated Keener. You're at level 40. You have no watch levels. Where do you go from here? Where do you start? It can be absolutely overwhelming. Do you worry about your specializations, your recalibration library, your blueprints, your watch levels, expertise, putting together your first build? It's massively overwhelming. This video is going to show you where you need to start. Hey everyone, this is Agent Meat from Delta Tactical. In this video, we're going to go over some early level 40 goals that you should have. Uh, these are not must do's, these are goals. When you first start, when you get to this point in the game, there are a lot of game mechanics that you still have to figure out. There's the gameplay and your own personal skills that you're going to have to start worrying about. And like I said, there's specializations that you haven't yet maxed out. There's your recalibration library that you have to stock up. There's all the bl blueprints that you're missing. Uh, you also will be wanting to level up your watch. You're going to start hearing people talk about expertise and putting together your first build. So let's talk about first steps and let's set some goals. The assumption I'm going to make at this point is that you started with the Warlords of New York DLC and you've not been to the base of operations in Washington. There are two main areas that you can interact with most, for the most part. One is inside, one is outside. Inside, you have your main vendor, Here you, go. you have your quartermaster and the specializations desk. Around the corner to the left is the crafting station. Anaya, who will sell blueprints. She's an important vendor that you should talk to. And then you've got the recalibration station. Hey, I'm out of blueprints, but can I help you craft something? In this particular case, I am not going to be using the account shared blueprints so that I can demonstrate with this character's progression how to acquire blueprints as you play the game. You'll also notice there's an awful lot of exotic reconfiguration blueprints that are in here. I'm not going to purchase them at this time. Um, mostly because I don't want to burn through all the cash that I've acquired so far. There is a black market AKM replica in here. There's a blueprint for holster weave bundle, which is used towards recalibration or optimization. Again, I'm not going to purchase these just yet. But this is where you do get them. Later. Outside is a repeat of most of these, but not all. There is your main vendor. Uh, this is basically a mirror of what's available inside. The inventories are exactly the same. In this area, there is the crafting station and the recalibration station. Over on this side, if you start to play Countdown, this is the Countdown vendor. This is where you're going to use your Countdown credits to purchase different things that are available. And then we're currently in an active season, and this would be the season vendor. Uh, it, right now, there's nothing actively giving out uh, season stars, so there's nothing to purchase from them yet. That will probably happen next week. So, first steps. First thing we want to talk about is specializations. What's up, Good to see you. If you've boosted your character to level 30 or if you started with the Warlords DLC, you will have these three specializations already fully specced. I recommend that you go in and you spend the points, um, basically fill out the entire tree. So as an example with the survivalist, you can see that this tree is fully specced out and I've chosen the weapons that I most often use. That's a very important point when you're putting builds together and you're just playing the game in general is make sure that you have the weapons that are in your inventory specced into so you get that additional 15% weapon damage. In this particular case, you will ha also have unlocked firewall gunner and technician, but there won't yet be any points available for you to spend into those trees. You'll have three points initially. You always start with three points. Uh, but the rest of the tree itself would be unlocked. As an example, with Firewall, you can see there is nothing specced into in this specialization. I've chosen to start with the Technician class because I want to build towards a Heartbreaker gear set, and I want to unlock the linked laser, or wanted to unlock the linked laser pointer. Spending three points, which cost five skill tiers each, into the rifle, that would unlock the linked laser pointer, and that would be a mod that's available for your uh, for weapons that have the long underbarrel rail. 
things like the Kingbreaker, the Police M4, and the list goes on and on and on. In this particular case, I've already unlocked 65 points towards 165, which usually raises the question, how do you get those points? Every time your watch level goes up by one, you gain three points. Uh, and then certain other activities will give you five points as a bonus. Uh, for example, the invaded missions that happen on the weekly reset on Tuesdays, each one of those missions will give you five points. So if you do those five missions, there's usually three preliminary missions, then the first stronghold, and then Tidal Basin. So five by five is 25. So that's going to give you 25 points towards uh, this specialization just by completing those missions. And you will gain watch levels simultaneously with that. So your watch again will go up, you get three points per. In this particular case, I have nine available points to spend on this class. So I'm going to spend them right now. I've already specced into the passive talent, which gives one additional skill tier. I've got the weapons that I'm choosing to use unlocked. So now I have a choice. Do I spec in to additional damage to drones or do I start opening up this section? I do it. You can always respec this. So as an example, let's free up two points here. To respec the element, it's F. That gives me 11 points to spend and it's spacebar to spend them here. Now I've got one point left to spend. There's nothing in here that allows me to spend a single point, so that will have to wait until I've gone up another watch level or done one of those missions. Now the important thing to bear in mind is you only gain points towards these specializations if they're active. So if I want to be working actively on the technician class, I need to activate it. One tip or trick, if you do not wish to watch the animation that takes place after you've activated, press and hold down the F key until you're back out to the desktop, so to speak. It's not the desktop, but you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean here. What that will do is by, automatically bypass the animation. So if I reopen the menu, Technician is now active because it's checked. The weapons that I'm using are have been specced into, and if as I gain watch levels, this specialization will increase. Uh, I'll, I'll be gaining points towards it. My recommendation in terms of a goal to set is pick one of these. Once you've got it maxed out, switch to another specialization and max that one out. You're going to want to work on these as you're playing the game. The next thing you're going to want to work on, another goal, is your recalibration library. So at the recalibration station, there's four tabs. There's expertise. We will touch on this, but don't worry too much about expertise early in the game. There's also optimization, recalibration station, and the recalibration library. In order to recalibrate a piece of gear or a weapon, whatever you want to recalibrate must be in your recalibration library. So you're going to need to start adding things to your recalibration library. These little green symbols mean that there's something in my inventory that can I can take. When you put it into the recalibration li library, you are going to lose the piece. So it is going to be deconstructed to take that attribute or whatever it happens to be away. So let's look and see what's available. There's actually two attributes that are available. Most of these are max because I've been playing for a while. But uh, as you can see here, crit damage is available. I'm going to press the space bar to see what's available. It's something that I've already marked for deconstruction or it marked as junk. So I'm going to extract this and add it to my recalibration library. And the other thing that is available is rate of fire. So I'm going to extract that as well. Even though I've been playing for a while, I've been neglecting to do this on certain occasions. Uh, again, you get old, you get forgetful. This process should be part of your actions after each time you come back to the base of operations. So you go out, you run some missions, you run some control points, just open world activity. Come back to the base of operations. Go through your, your sort everything. Look for the things that you're going to want to keep. I highly recommend anything that you, look, that you acquire that you want to keep. Make it a favorite. So as an example with this Carbine 7, if I press R, it removes it as a favorite. The star that is right here went away. To mark it as a favorite, press R if you're on PC, and then click select mark as favorite and hit the space bar. 
I can't tell you how many pieces over the years I've inadvertently sold or deconstructed. Selling something is not so bad as long as you're still in game because you can buy it back from the vendor. If you've deconstructed it though, or run it into the recalibration library, it's gone. I've gotten rid of exotics that way. I've gotten rid of uh, max rolled uh, weapons and gear pieces inadvertently over the years. So if it's part of a build and something that you're going to want to keep, even if it's just for now, mark it as a favorite. The rest of it, what I do is I mark it as junk, but I go through a couple of steps. Go to your recalibration library and donate what you can. One thing I would recommend to mid-level players, and I don't mean your abilities, I mean you, you're, you're no longer a new back-to-the-game player, is you would go to the Expertise tab, press and hold down X to donate any remaining junk towards proficiency levels. Early in the game, you have to make a choice between do I want to work on Expertise and Proficiency, or am I going to concentrate early on on gathering resources and materials and my recommendation is you work to early on towards gathering resources and materials because they will be very useful for optimization and recalibration expertise is important as you as you work through the game but if you have equipped uh, a, an assault rifle as an example and a, a gear or brand set you will be gaining proficiency as you're using the pieces so you will be mixing and matching and using different pieces. You're in inherently or naturally going to be gaining proficiency. I'm going to put a link in the upper uh, right corner at this point for a full explanation on the expertise and proficiency system within the game. For a new player, though, don't worry about it for right now. We'll come back to it. So, we've talked so far about specializations and recalibration. Now let's talk about blueprints. Often when you watch a video, someone will, will be saying you need to put in the plus 20 round magazine and you need crit chance everywhere you can. You look through your own blueprint library and you don't have any of those. Anything I can do for you? These are available for me to craft at this point. I just have to spend the points to do it. And again, I'm not going to go through that right now, but I'm going to make one. So the CQBSS scope. At some point, I have picked up this blueprint. You pick them up through doing open world activities, uh, mostly challenging or, her or heroic control points, and also certain missions will uh, and uh, projects will give you uh, your, your blueprints. Once you have them, especially for gear pieces, you then have to craft them. You don't automatically get them. So again, the crafting process in this case, it's going to cost me 860, sorry, 876 E credits. I'm going to 12 electronics and 12 steel. So press and hold X, you go through the crafting uh, animation. And I have now made that scope. And it moves out off of this list and down into the ones with the check mark of the pieces that I already have. And the same is true for all of these. And at, at some point, I'm going to come through and craft all these. How do you get these blueprints? The best thing you can be doing early game is getting a build together that works for you and your play style that allows you to take on challenging control points. What I found when I was new to the game, a DPS style build or a tank build or something like that wasn't working for me. So I went with a skill build. And one of the easiest skill builds to put together would be a hardwired gear set build. The advantage of gear sets, and I'm not going to go into any detail on this, but the advantage to a gear set is they only have two attributes. They've got, in this case, the skill tier and then one other attribute. So what I've done here is, I don't remember what was here originally, but I recalibrated this to skill damage, and then I've got a skill haste mod. They're a little bit easier to manage early game, and this will allow you to gather gear and blueprints to progress your game. The next video in this series is going to be on first builds. Uh, this particular character has three. It started with the hardwired one. Then I put together another skill build that does more damage and is easier to run. And then I put together a build that focuses in on more DPS, uh, which would be the Heartbreaker style build. One other thing to definitely make sure that you're doing as you're playing the game early on is go to your projects tab off of your map and do the weekly SHD requisition. That resets every Tuesday. 
although it doesn't say it on the card when you first look at it, it gives you experience. It also gives you an exotic and a named item every week for donating. Uh, it's usually water or food or receiver components and some other materials, which is why gathering your materials early on is important. Some of the exotics that I currently have on this character have come from exactly that. The Scorpio that's here and the test subject actually came out of the same uh, exotic. It came out of the same cache when I finished that project. Now, as far as watch levels and expertise, there are ways. For example, uh, if you go after resource convoys on hard or challenging with a couple of directives. It only takes two to three of them to get, get one watch level. So it's a quick way to run around the map and build your watch level up. So gaining levels is actually not that hard. The trick though is you need to be able to play at hard or challenging and you need to be able to play with directives. So again, this all comes back to putting together your first build. What works for me, uh, or what worked for me when I was new to the game and still learning the game, its mechanics, and building my own personal skill set, was a skill build. The advantages to skill builds, you're generally playing them from cover, you're generally playing them a little further back from the NPCs, and most importantly, skills draw aggro away from you and onto themselves. So it's not that you're invisible or immune, but you're less likely to be shot which means that there's a higher likelihood you can finish the content, whatever that happens to be. So it's one of the, the most viable, in my opinion, builds to try and put together initially. You will transition away quite quickly from that skill-based build into something that more suits your playstyle. The builds I tend to run now would be Heartbreaker, uh, Strikers, higher DPS builds. But when I was new to the game, I wasn't, I didn't have the skill set to play those types of builds. So I stayed away from them. So in terms of a wrap up at this point, when you're new to the game, first and foremost, this game is a grind. You're grinding for gear. You're grinding for uh, material, building materials. You're grinding to increase the things that are in your recalibration library. You're grinding for blueprints. You're grinding for watch levels. You're grinding for expertise. It can get to the point where it's just a grind and there's no enjoyment in the game. So as you're playing the game, you will be working on these things. And again, put them as goals, not things that you have to do in a particular order. You're just working towards all of them. And that's basically it. At this point, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, please subscribe. Uh, for all people who've gotten to this point, please consider leaving a like uh, or a comment because the interaction does help the YouTube uh, algorithm and it helps the channel. And that's it for Agent Meat. Hope you guys have a great day and thanks for watching.